Hello everyone, my name is Leon Adler and welcome to the History Upon Our Shores. Today we will be discovering the Stratford Shoal Lighthouse. This lighthouse exists in the middle of the Long Island Sound. That's a body of water that separates Long Island, New York from Connecticut. Most folks don't realize this lighthouse is even there. Sitting six miles from the shore, it's barely visible with the naked eye. Why is it there? How long has it been there? How did it get there? These questions and more we will answer as we explore the Stratford Shoal Lighthouse. To fully appreciate the history of this lighthouse, we need to go back to over 400 years ago. The year was 1614 and the earliest known maps of the Long Island Sound were being charted by Adrian Block. At that time, those maps showed two islands where the Stratford Shoal Lighthouse now stands today. Over the following hundred years or so, the sea washed the islands off the map, leaving behind a dangerous shoal. These were rocks located just under the surface of the water. These rocks were a constant and dangerous threat to ship traffic. The earliest known attempt to mark these rocks was around 1820, and this was done with a couple of spar buoys that were placed at the north and the south sides of the shoal. In 1831, a contract was awarded to a man named Hicks to erect an iron spindle on the reef, but no one really knows if that ever took place. And finally, the Lighthouse Board placed what's known as a lightship at the southeastern edge of the shoal in 1838. This was a 100 ton ship and it was alternatively known as the middle ground floating light, Stratford Shoal Light Vessel or the Stratford Point Light Vessel. It had numerous names, but like many other lightships over time, it received designation letters and this one was given LV-15 in the year of 1867. After numerous storms have caused the light ship to break its anchor and drift away, eventually in 1872, the lighthouse board recommended that a lighthouse be built to replace the aging and troublesome light ship. Laying of the courses for the cut stone foundation began in 1875 and work on the keeper's dwelling and the tower began in the spring of 1877 and finally the activation of the lighthouse occurred on December 15th that year 1877. The lighthouse's foundation is built with huge undressed blocks of granite attached together with thick cast iron staples encased in lead. Stands 19 feet tall, has a diameter of 55 feet at its base. The architecture used at the Stratford Shoal Lighthouse shows a touch of Gothic influence featuring a steeply pitched cross gable roof and hooded pointed arced windows on the upper story of the tower. The bottom portion of the tower is square, while above the second story, the corners are chamfered to create an octagonal cross section. The tower rises three stories high and is attached to the south side of the 28 foot square two story dwelling. The keeper's dwelling has a living room, kitchen, five bedrooms, a sitting room, and a supply room, and an iron spiral staircase leads up the tower to the lantern room and provides the only access between the floors. The first keeper of the Stratford Shoal was an Irish immigrant named William McLoin. And even though the keeper had two assistants, the station was very isolated and windswept. Visitors were urged to bring stacks of the latest newspapers with them just to help the keepers stay in touch with news on the mainland. But the isolation may have driven at least one assistant keeper mad. In 1905, 
the head keeper was ashore for vacation, leaving his two assistants to take care of the station's duties. The first assistant keeper, Morell Hulse, was a 54-year-old Long Island native and former sailor, and the second assistant keeper was a lighthouse service rookie named Julius Costa. Suddenly, and without warning, Costa attacked Hulse with a sharp instrument. He displayed aggressive, bizarre, and suicidal behavior, and Hulse had all he had to do to contain Costa. After several days, finally Costa was removed from the lighthouse, where he ultimately committed suicide back on the mainland. The keepers who remain in the lighthouse for years to come attest to the fact that this lighthouse is now haunted with Costa's ghost, as doors would slam and pots of boiling water would fall over on their own. Over the next 65 years, the Stratford Shoal Lighthouse continued to be manned as staff came and went, but it was finally automated on July 1st, 1970, and its crew of four Coast Guardsmen was assigned elsewhere. Much of the interior detailing has been taken out since, and the lighthouse can still be seen today in a distance from the Bridgeport Port Jefferson Ferry. What does this lighthouse look like now? What is its condition? we decided to take a ride out and see for ourselves. And so a brand new chapter unfolds in the story of our lighthouse. In May of 2014, 
the Stratford Show light was deemed excess by the United States Coast Guard and was made available under the guidelines of the National Historic Lighthouse Preservation Act. This availability went out to nonprofit corporations, educational agencies, and others, but ultimately in the year of 2016, it was a young man by the name of Nick Korstad from Portland, Oregon, who was notified that his plan to use the Stratford Show Lighthouse as a museum where guests could spend the night had been accepted. Korstad hopes to have the lighthouse ready to welcome guests in about two years. But based on the current conditions of the lighthouse, Mr. Korstad has his work cut out for him. This might seem a bit ambitious for a young man in his 30s, but Nick Korstad is no stranger to lighthouses. He owns several already, including the Borden Flats Lighthouse on the Fall River in Massachusetts, where it's being used as a bed and breakfast and is currently sold out year after year. And so, the story of our lighthouse continues. We want to wish Mr. Korstad all the best in his endeavors, and we will welcome the opportunity to see this piece of history restored and refurbished to the condition it once was. My name is Leon Adler, and we hope you've enjoyed the story of the Stratford Shoal Lighthouse as a part of the history upon our shores.